Well, let's talk about who's your one. Today, we're going to talk about pray for your one. We're asking all of you all to identify at least one person who needs Christ. Surely all of us know somebody. If you don't, you need a life. You need to get out a little bit more. But hopefully every one of you know one person. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a co-worker, uh, school friend, whatever. But identify one. And we want you to do uh, three things. We want you to pray for them. We want you to engage with them, talk to them, and, and, and engage with them. And then hopefully be able to invite them to Christ or at least invite them to church. And, uh, and we're going to do that this month. And I'm eager to see all the great reports because of it. I'm going to start today with Jesus' prayer and then Paul's attitude towards folks. Dennis was talking a while ago about putting Christ first, and one of the things that you have to do is to be a disciple, and to be a disciple means that you discipline yourself to do spiritual disciplines. Like he was talking about the football teams are all revving up, and the volleyball teams and like that, but to do anything, you have to practice, don't you? If you want to play the piano, you have to practice. If you want to do anything well, these Olympians, do you realize what they did and went through? Do you realize all the practice some of those sprinters did? I mean, they ate just not much food for probably four years. They ran and ran and ran and ran, and they might be on the track for 10 seconds, 60 seconds. They did all that for that short time frame. I'm telling you, in order to be a disciple of Christ, you have to do some disciplines as well. You have to practice spiritual disciplines. To me, the greatest spiritual discipline is prayer. That's where you start. And I hope you pray every day. And one of the things I want you to do is to pray for your one. You know that it's not God's will that any should go to hell. You know that. Pray for that person. Pray that God will hear your prayer. And pray that God will put the right people and the right messages at the right time in their life. Uh, it's amazing what God can do through prayer. But today I want to talk to you about, about what Jesus prayed and the attitude that Paul had towards lost folks as well. Uh, this prayer, I'm convinced, in John 17 happened at Garden of Gethsemane. I think John stayed awake long enough to hear some of the prayer and, and wrote it down. He didn't hear it all because he fell asleep. But I think he stayed awake long enough to hear some. And you're going to hear, this is Jesus praying, and he's praying for us as well as his disciples. So would you stand and let's read the Gospel of John, chapter 17, beginning with verse 15. This is Jesus talking. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as, I, as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also who will ever believe in me through their message. That's us. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am, 
then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do. And these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them and I will be in them. And let's read about Paul, what he thought about the lostness of the Jews. With Christ as my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief. For my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters, I would be willing to forever be cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. They are the people of Israel, chosen to be God's adopted children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenants with them and gave them his law. He gave them the privilege of worshiping him and receiving wonderful promises. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are their ancestors, and Christ himself was an Israelite as far as his human nature is concerned. And he is God the one who rules over everything and is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. God's reading for God's people. You may be seated. Jesus prayed for us, and we need to pray for our one, but let's look and see what Jesus prayed for us for. Don't you think it's kind of important to see what Jesus was praying for us for? Probably there in the Garden of Gethsemane. I think it's pretty significant. Well, first of all, I think we need to pray that we fulfill Jesus' mission for us. Jesus has a mission for us, and we mentioned it last week. Uh, it's the Great Commission. Go. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all things that I have taught you. So that's our mission. Our mission is to go out to get people saved, to get them baptized, and start teaching them, and uh, to teach them the things that Jesus taught us. That's the significance of what's going on. Jesus prayed this for us. He says, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. I think you will agree with me that our world is full of evil today. Always has been. Always has been. Genesis all the way through. It's always been full of evil. The evil one, Satan, has tried to get us away from God. That's his number one thing to do. But look at what Jesus says to God. He says, I do not belong to this world any more than I do. He says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I gave myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that they may be made holy by your truth. What is it that Jesus is praying for us about? He's praying that we will be made holy. I like how King James puts it. He says, Lord, they're in the world, but not let them be of the world. Folks, we really don't have much choice right now. We're in a world, we're in a world that doesn't care about Christ. But that doesn't matter because we've been called to live for Jesus. We've been called to live a holy life. We've been called to, even though we're in the world, to not be of the world. That's one of the difficulties we have today is that we resemble the world too much in the church. We don't really resemble the holiness of God. We don't really express the love, the joy, and the peace of God. And the patience and the kindness and the goodness. We need to be different. Now, I've told you all this story before, but it's too good not to tell. Okay? W.A. Criswell, who was a big-time pastor. He was first time, First Baptist Dallas, and at the time it was the largest church in the world. And he was on TV and kind of a big dog. W.A. was a good guy. 
But there was one day, right before he was going out to preach, on TV, all this kind of stuff, one of his deacons wanted to see him. And he said, well, you know, Bob, it's kind of service time. I, I need to, he said, Pastor, I got to talk to you. So he said, okay. Bob says, you know, I work down at the chemical plant. He said, yeah, I knew that. He said, well, last week, one of our guys fell in the vat of chemicals. He said, they pulled him out, and he was literally burning up with acid, dying before our eyes. And he was screaming out, someone tell me about Jesus. Someone tell me about Jesus. And he said, you know, there were 17 guys standing around, and not one of them could tell him about Jesus. And Dr. Criswell looked at Bob, and he said, Bob, well, why didn't you tell him? And Bob says, well, you don't understand. He says, I know here at the church I'm a good guy and, and I'm a deacon and all. He said, but at work, I'm the foreman and, you know, I, I got to act differently and I, I can't see that side of me. Isn't that a shame? I'm going to tell you something. That's not something that Jesus expects of us. He expects us to come to church and to love God and to love others to serve him and when you go out from this building on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, he expects you to be that same person. He expects you to show Jesus to everyone around you. I met somebody one time and I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm a secret. I'm, I, he says, I'm on a secret mission for God. I disguise myself as an accountant. But he looked at himself more as a Christian who told people about Jesus. But he made his living being an accountant. Folks, that's what God, that's what Jesus prayed for you. That you would be holy 24-7. And I'm going to tell you something. As I mentioned last week, if you wait till you're perfect, you're never going to witness I mean, you know, every now and then I, I, I keep, I run into young couples and I say, well, we want kids, but we want to wait till we're ready. We want to be ready financially. We want to be like that. And I just said, if you wait till you're ready, you'll never have kids. <laughs> you're never going to be ready for that. Folks, I, I mean that, but I also know this, that if your life doesn't look different than other people's lives, why would they want it? If they don't see Jesus in you, why would they want Jesus? Let's go to the second point. He prayed something else. This is going to, this is a little shocking. Pray for Jesus' followers to get along so that unbelievers will be saved. When I read this, it shocked me. But one of the ways that we win the world to Christ is by us getting along with each other. Did you know that? Let me read it to you. It says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for the, all who will ever believe in me through their message. In other words, you know, we got the message. It got passed down to disciples. They passed it down, and it got passed down to us 2,000 years later. Listen to what he says. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And he says, I'm praying that they'll be one. I don't think he's saying that we have to agree on everything, but there's a difference between disagreeing on some things and getting along, isn't there? Being one. And what's the reason why he wants us to get along? It's in verse 21. And may they be in us so that the what? The world will believe you sent me. It is important for us as believers to get along with each other. If you get to where you don't like somebody and you don't love somebody and you can't stand somebody or you talk negatively about somebody, 
you are not exhibiting Christ. I told you this a few weeks ago. I'm going to say it again. If you're talking negatively about somebody or your church or somebody in your church and they're not present, the Bible calls that gossip. And folks, Jesus prayed that we would get along because does anybody in our world get along? Our politicians, I mean, can't get along. Most workplaces, they don't get along. People can't get along anywhere. I mean, we got athletes making millions of dollars a year that say, I, I don't like these people. I don't play for them anymore. Pay me $30 million a year and I'll get along. <laughs> Problem about it is they wouldn't win a game if they did that. <laughs> but seriously, they can't get along. Anywhere you go in life, people can't get along. There ought to be one place where they can look at it and say, you know, these folks get along. They're different. They love each other. They like being around each other. That's what Jesus prayed for. Now, I'm just telling you the Great Commission is wonderful, and we promote that and go with that and bang on that a lot. Go, go, go. But I'm telling you, this prayer right here is just as important. It's just as important for us to get along as it is for us to go. Because if we go and we bring them back to a bunch of people not getting along, and I don't mean you have to agree with everything that's going on, but there's a different way to do that. You know what I'm saying? I've told you this story before, but y'all can never remember my stories, okay? I'm old enough. I'm entitled to repeat. My last church, I had two guys come to me a lot. I'm not going to name their names because there's some of the people from that church watch me on Sunday, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. But one guy would come into my office, and he was convinced that if we would just sing Bill Gaither songs, our church would grow like crazy. Our music minister happened to disagree with him. But he would come in and start talking about it. After a while, he realized that I wasn't doing what he was asking. So then he got where he would come in, red-faced, and yell at me. And he did it two or three times a month. He just felt like he needed to come in and yell at me. There was another guy in the church. I knew he loved me. I knew he loved the church. I knew he loved God. He served Jesus. Now, every now and then, he'd come in and talk to me and he'd say, Pastor, you know I love you. He said, but have you ever thought about maybe this? And he would give a suggestion. I always listened to him. You know why? Because I knew he loved God. I knew he loved the church. I knew he loved me. The other guy, I think, just was wanting it to be his way and no other way. Both of them disagreed with things going on, but do you see the difference in how you handle that? How you do it? One did it in love, and one did it out of self-centeredness. When you disagree, go to the person you disagree with and say, have you ever thought about that? I've been in ministry a long time. There probably isn't much I hadn't thought of, but I, I'm always open. And I'm always being able to, I'm willing to be convinced that there's a better way to do it. But I want you to know something. More than how we do things is how we get along. Because I'm just telling you something. We can all get ones and we can all bring them in here. If we don't get along, guess what? Now, let me say this as I end. I've never been in a church, ever. Not growing up, not my, you know, good old country church I grew up in, not, not ever. I've been in a mega church. I've never been in a church where I think the folks love each other so well. I know the Blevins moved, and uh, they said the same things when they moved. They said, some of y'all know them, 
They said, we've never been in a church that has been as loving and as caring as this one. And I believe that this church is that way. And I believe God's poised us to start seeing people one to Christ, seeing that baptistry used all the time. I believe we're poised, but we got to safeguard that one thing. we got to get along. So you can help each other. Help me. If I come to you and I start talking something negative about our church or negative about a church member, just say, you know, Pastor, you shouldn't be doing that. I hope you will. And I hope you'll give each other permission to say, hey, let's not do that. Now, here's the last one. Pray with passion for your one. You know, the one thing that I see differently in Baptist churches anyway, now that than 40 years ago or 45 years ago when I started in ministry, 45 years ago, I saw a real passion, a real care that lost people would be saved. I don't see it much anymore. Not only in our church, but in all churches. I just don't see it. Do we not really think that people without Christ are going to hell? Don't we think it's pretty important that people get saved? Well, Paul realized that by and large, the Jews were not receiving Jesus as, as their Savior. They rejected his Messiahship, said he's not who he said. Listen to Paul's attitude in prayer. He says, with Christ as my witness, I speak with utter truthfulness. My conscience and the Holy Spirit confirm it. My heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief. When's the last time we've had a prayer meeting or when's the last time you've prayed for a lost person and wept and felt that bitter sorrow and unending grief for that person? And he says, it's for my people, my Jewish brothers and sisters. Now listen to this. I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. Oh my goodness. You realize what Paul's praying? He said, if you could save them by sending me to hell, send me to hell. Now that's caring about a lost person. I don't think I've ever cared about anybody that much. But that's caring about a lost person. Maybe we can't get to where Paul is. Paul just saying, Lord, if you can take me and sacrifice me and put me in hell and save all the rest of them, do it. But I'll tell you what we can do. We can become what the old preachers used to call become soul conscience. We can realize that people we're seeing and people we're being around have a soul. And we need to be conscious about where they're going to spend eternity and how they're living their life now. Who's your one? Pray for them. Pray for them every day. Pray for them to get saved and care about it. We have some prayer guides back there if you didn't get one last week that help guide you in a daily prayer time and devotional time. Grab one of those and do that. But pray for your one every day and care for them. Would you pray with me? Father, as all of us here today are thinking about our one, I pray that we'll be able to fulfill your mission. I pray that we'll live a holy life that somebody would want to be there. I pray we'll get along so somebody will want to be a part of a group that gets along and loves you. And Lord, I pray that we'll really care about our one, that they really come to know Jesus. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.